Hi everyone, welcome back to Mobility IQ Practice. Today's class is going to involve strengthening for the legs, hip opening, and shoulder opening. You'll want a strap, two yoga blocks, and a blanket or a towel. And we'll begin the practice lying down on our backs. So we start and end our mobility practice with rest. And really, if you take my yoga classes, you know that I start and end classes with a little ahead of time rest and then the final resting pose. So as you come to this position, lying back, you might choose to close the horizon line of your eyes. And the purpose of eyes closed is so that you can connect to the sensation of breathing. I always find when I close my eyes, I have a little bit of better concentration on breath, but you have to do you. <laughs> so maybe eyes open works better. And as you're breathing, looking for expansion and contraction patterns. So the inhalation is where the expansion happens. It's like your trunk or your torso gets big as it fills up with breath. And then the exhalation is where that contraction pattern happens, that feeling of almost like you're narrowing in towards your spinal column. So slowing down the breath, feeling movement of belly, feeling expansion of ribs. You might even feel like your shoulders are moving slightly, the collarbones opening and closing. And let's take some time to focus on breathing into our right ribs. So take your right hand, place it somewhere against the right hand side of your rib cage, and imagine that you could breathe into just your right lung. So you might visualize the right lung as a balloon that's inflating and deflating. And you can feel the pressure or warmth of the hand against the rib cage on the right side as that little bit of feedback, that hand is telling you where to direct your breath. And yes, both of the lungs are expanding and contracting, but we're pretending like we could breathe into just the one, the one on the right. And can you notice when you inhale, the right hand side of your rib cage flares out into your hand? And when you exhale, it's like it pulls away from the palm. And take a few more right balloon of lung expanding and contracting breaths. And release right hand, right arm, switch to the left, placing left hand against left side of rib cage, and that's that same visualization as if you could just breathe into left lung and left lung alone. So this effort in allowing expansion in left hand side of ribs. And what a great opportunity to be able to slow down enough in our day to focus on expanding one lung at a time. And 
And take a few more into left hand side. And then release the left hand, left arm, long by your side body. So set your arms as if you were coming into Shavasana. If your knees aren't bent and soles of feet aren't placed on the ground, come to this position with your knees pointing up. And then start to lift your heels off the floor and then put them back down. Very simple act of heels rising up, the toes remain grounded, and then the heels come down. And as you do this, you can feel your calf muscles waking up a little bit. Let's couple this movement of the heels lifting off the ground with arching up into a cow pose. So as you inhale, heels come up and your whole spine arches away from the ground. And exhale, just let the heels come down the back, relax towards the floor. Do that a few times, heels up, arch away. And heels down the back and press more fully into the floor. And come to resting where your heels are grounded and your back is grounded. And then can you just let the heels be on the floor, lift the feet as if they're two ramps. So the toes and the center arches are lifting. So working with just a little bit of an angle for our ankles. And as you are lifting your toe mound and arches, can you tuck your tailbone under and really press your low back into the floor? And then lay on the feet and let your back come to neutral. Do that a couple times. Heels dig, tailbone tucks under. Feet land. Pelvis goes back to neutral. Let's see if we can combine these. So come to resting. Inhale, heels up, arch your spine away from the floor. Exhale, tuck toes, heels down, lift the feet as if they are ramps, upward ramps. Do that a couple times. Inhale, heels up, arch. Exhale, back of the heels, dig and tuck. And two more right here. So this gentle release of the spine, this gentle movement of the pelvis. Allow the back to relax, allow the feet to relax. Reach over, find your strap. Unwind it so it's a long piece. You can also use a belt. Right? It doesn't need to be a yoga strap. You can also use like a tie, <laughs> a necktie or a towel. Take your right foot, hook it in your yoga strap. So the arch of the foot's in there and left leg is sliding long along your yoga mat. Hold both sides of the strap in your right hand and climb your hand up nice and high towards your foot. And then start to put slack in the line. So you're going to let your leg lower and give your strap enough slack that it allows your leg to lower almost to the floor, but you're maintaining an absolutely straight right arm. So there's no bend of the elbow and pause when you get there. So your leg will be hovering, your, your foot is strapped, your arm is straight, your elbow is straight. Right. And then do this. Inhale, reach your arm, bring your leg with you. Exhale, lower the leg and the arm as if they're like one unit, like leverage. Do it a few times, hamstring swing. Inhale, reach up, exhale, lower. So you're not letting your leg hit the ground or the back of the heel touch the floor. Right? You're keeping the leg suspended and you're working with long limbs. So a long right leg, a long right arm. And I love this. It's a combination of opening for the shoulder, <laughs> stretching for the hamstring, and a little bit of passive range of motion for hip flexion, which is when you lift your leg in front of your body. And you might find your range of motion is actually getting bigger. So the more that you do, the more you open up, your arm might go a little higher over your head, your leg might reach a little more to the ceiling. One more here. 
and come to the position where your arm is reaching and your leg is reaching. Then climb your hand high up on your strap, so you're going back up to strap, being held close to your foot. Flex your foot strongly so your toes will pull back towards your chin, your heel reaches up to the ceiling, and then start to twist your foot internally and externally. And as you're doing this, I want you to notice that it's not really happening only from your foot. You can see your lower leg is moving, your knee is pivoting in and out, and that means your thigh is turning in and out, which means your hip is internally and externally rotating. So just warming up this action of long lever of the leg, internal and external rotation from the hip joint. Go into the external, so that would be toes pointing off to the right, towards the right shoulder or even beyond, and just hold there. Take a few breaths. Now take your left hand onto the front of your left hip and do open halfway, so you go halfway to the side and back to the center. So we're working in our like 50% range of motion of taking the leg off to the side and coming back to the center. And the reason for our 50% range is that one, we're not super warmed up. And two, I really want you to be able to take the leg out without feeling like you're going to roll all the way over to your right side. So your hips don't twist, but the leg does go off to the side and come back in. So keeping your backside, or as Moj Day likes to say, your butt cheeks <laughs> glued <laughs> to the floor. One more time, open out by halfway and bring it all the way back up. Switch your feet, so stepping lefty in, setting right leg free. Go to that, both sides of the strap held in the left hand, you're choking up on the line on purpose. Right arm by the side, give your strap enough slack that you can lower your leg till it's hovering, it's just grazing right above the floor. Left arm stays straight, so you can feel this tension on the line of strap, keeping everything long and strong and then arm goes and leg goes with it. So back to the hamstring swing. You could link this hamstring swinging action to half breath cycles, like you inhale down and exhale over, or exhale as you reach. You could also just breathe the breath's natural rhythm and move in a fluidity that makes sense for you. You might notice that your range is increasing. Do just a couple more. Now, as you next raise the leg, keep arm and leg raised, climb your hand high up on your strap close to your foot. Pull the toes towards your chin, reach the heel away from you, and do that external and internal, turning the foot out, turning the foot in. Notice the ankle, the knee, the lower leg, the thigh, and the hip are rotating internally and externally. So the root of the movement is your hip, but the whole leg is going along for the ride. And go into your turned out position. Right hand on top of your hip. This is so that the pelvis doesn't twist to the left. So we're keeping the pelvis grounded and open out by half and come back by half. Keep your foot turned out as you do this. So not really holding anything in a long static stretch. Just working with mobilizing or a little bit more of a dynamic movement pattern. And last one, only to halfway. Keep your butt cheeks glued 
and bring it all the way back up to center. Bend the knee, unhook your foot from your strap, strap off to the side, and then bend both knees, roll over to your right hand side. From there, come up to a seated position where your knees are bent and your legs are in front of you. So legs in front, knees bent, right? Shift yourself forward, so a feeling of being able to casually just kind of sit forward and rest with your arms wrapped around the legs slightly. And then take your eyes and your awareness to your feet and see that all 10 of your toe prints, right? We have fingerprints. All 10 of your toe prints are currently down. Right? That you're not shifting weight to pinky toe side of foot or big toe side of foot only, that you're really grounding through both sides of the feet. And then see about lifting all 10 of the toes up. So it's just the toes. The toe mounds stay grounded, but the little individual digits of your toes lift. And imagine there are strings tied to each of your toes, and, and then someone like a marionette puppeteer is pulling your toes up towards the ceiling. And then try to spread the toes far apart from each other. So not only are they lifted, but they're fanning apart from each other. And notice what muscles you can feel working for this lift and spread of toes. And then send this message from your brain to your big toes and put the big toes down, just the big toes down. Can you do it without letting the outer four come along for the ride? So individually, big toes ground, outer four stay lifted. You may notice they start to curl a little bit. Now, what about switching that effort? So the outer four toes go down, but the big toes have the marionette puppeteer pulling up on them. <laughs> then go back to all 10 lifted and fanning apart from each other. And then for a few rounds, try what's called pianoing. So that means you start with your pinky toes, you put them down first, then you go to your ring toe, then you're going to middle toe, then to index toe, then to big toe. Lift them all up again and try to roll the toes down individually from the pinky side to the big toe side. And you can see why we call this piano, right? If you've ever played the piano and just let your hands graze across the keys. Then go back to all 10, lift it and spread. And then try it the other way, it's really hard. Try big toes down, <laughs> then go index. Ah, then, then ring, or middle, then ring, <laughs> then pinky. Do it again, lift and attempt to piano down the other way. Oh my gosh, it's so hard. <laughs> and then lift them all, fan them out, spread them wide, hold them up there, and relax them entirely. Tuck your left heel in towards your groins, so you go to half comfortable cross-legged with your left leg, and then take your right arm under your right leg, you're kind of scooping underneath it, leaning back until your right leg gets airborne. Right? So you're hoisting your leg up by using your arm underneath. Now take your free hand, that would be your left hand, right over the top of your knee for support. Flex your foot strongly, so that's toes pulling back towards your shin, and do a rotation of your foot to the right. And I want you to think, when I turn my foot to the right, my whole lower leg and my knee joint swivels to the right as well. And so we've got external rotation of just the lower leg and then bring it towards a straightened pattern. While you're up there, turn the foot in so the whole lower leg and knee twist inward and then pull your foot down. Keep the foot internally rotated and straighten as best you can. Then do the swivel, whoosh, of turning it out and pull down. Keep the foot turned out straight in three quarters, and while you're up there, do a few turn-ins and turn-outs. Mm -hmm. Can you feel your knee moving under your left hand? So this rotation is really coming from the lower leg and the knee joints. And do a turn-in, so big toe towards the left, and 
pull the heel down. Good. Release that side, tuck the right heel in, stand the left knee up, and then ho hold under. So you're going to do your hoisting effort, right hand over the knee. Go to flexed, toes to you. Pinky toe goes to the left. So external rotation, straighten as best you can. While you're up there, do a rotation inward and pull the heel down. Keep that internal, straight in three quarters. Go into a swivel into external, whole lower leg turns out, bring your heel down. Now when we go up into this straightening effort, we're just gonna juice it side to side. Right? So can you connect your ankle and foot movement to the tibia and fibula bone of your lower leg shifting right and left, the knee turning right and left. You might feel little creaks underneath your hand. And then go into that big external, toes to the left, and pull the heel down. And then let that go. Now you'll want your yoga block. So take a yoga block and sit on it. I'm gonna do this as a profile, a sideways view for you to see. So I'm sitting on my yoga block, I'm gonna start here. And then I'm gonna pull my right heel as close to my sitting bone as I can. And this left leg I'm folding under. So I have like a half virasana going in one leg. And then I'm sitting on the block with my right heel pulled back as close to the block or as close to under my sit bone as I can get it. Notice the angle of your shin is a diagonal. Now we wrap our arms around our leg and lean forward. So our body weight goes into the shin and the foot. Push your heel into the floor. Right? Stay leaning forward, but drive your heel back and down. And notice what you can feel opening along your Achilles tendon. Now stay leaning forward, keep driving your heel back and down. Then I want you to try to lift your toes off of the ground. So we create a really dramatic angle in the front of this right ankle. Keep driving the heel back and down, keep leaning your body weight forward and keep trying to lift your toes manually up away from the floor. Hold it there, toes up, heel back and down, body weight shifted forward for another breath. And then relax everything and shift back. Now, I want you to decide, do you need this block anymore? Or could you lose the block and get your butt a little closer, the heel a little farther back under the sit bone, right? So you may or may not need the block for the second round. Wrap your arms around the leg. Shift your weight forward. Your heel will be tempted to get light and lift up, but that is not what we're doing. You're keeping the skin of your heel pressing back and pressing down. As you shift your weight forward, you'll feel Achilles lengthening, but also the muscles in the front of your shin starting to fire up. And then we really get those muscles along the front of the shin to fire up by trying to lift the toes. Hold your toes up away from the floor. Don't lean back when you do it. <laughs> keep the toes held up, keep the heel driving back and down, keep your body weight leaning forward. All of that warmth, all of that fieriness in the lower leg. One, two, just to five, three, keep holding the toes up, four, <laughs> and five. Relax everything and shift back. Let's do the other side. So this is really great for dorsiflexion of the ankle, which I want us to have loads of for what we're going to explore after this. Sit up on the block, fold your right shin under. You're bringing that heel very close to your sitting bone. Diagonal angle, hug, lean. Hug, lean, drive the heel back, back and down. Keep leaning forward until your heel wants to get light, but you say, no, absolutely not. And then lift your toes off the floor, float them. Even if they don't actually come up, it's just that intention to have them lift. Hold them up there. 
keep making the crease at the front of your ankle or the wrinkles at the front of the ankle deeper. Take one more breath with that. Toes up, heel back and down, body weight leaning forward. And then relax. Lean your body weight back so you take some pressure off the heel and decide, am I going to use this block for round two or maybe I'm going to get a little closer to the ground for round two. And then situate yourself. Maybe your heel comes farther back. Right? The angle of the shin more diagonally forward and up because we made some space. Hug the leg, drive the heel, lean the body weight forward, deepen the creases at the front of your ankle. Peel your toes up away from the ground without letting your heel lift, without letting your body lean back. Hold them up there. One, two, three, four, and five. Relax the toes and shift back. Now, we don't usually do a lot of yoga postures in this class, but we're going to take a downward facing dog. So come to your hands and your knees. Situate your wrists under your shoulders. You might turn your hands out very slightly. Walk your knees away. So they move back by three or four inches. Tuck your toes. Sit back, heat, uh, seat goes to heels. So they get the toes a little bit of a stretch. And then raise your hips up and back. Calves are nice and open from that work of dorsiflexion with the ankles. Maybe you pedal a little bit here. Maybe you sway side to side. Just allowing for length. We explored long arms, long legs in the hamstring swing. Look for a nice long spine, crown of head and tailbone growing farther apart from each other as we lengthen. And take a breath all the way in. And exhaling, walk your feet to your hands. Bend your knees a little bit. Bring your hands onto your hips and come all the way up to standing. So it's an unhinging to stand. And we're going to do just a little bit of spine movement using a strap before we get into the deeper hip and leg movement. The reason for this is because the lower part of our spine, tailbone, sacrum, right, is attached to the backside of our pelvis. So I want to move the spine a little, move the pelvis a little before we get into the hip work. Come to standing on top of your strap. So you'll want to make sure that you have even amounts of slack on either side. And then you're going to place your feet at hips distance, or you could do feet really close, like sides of the big toes touching heels apart. Right? And see that you have equal, even slack lines on either side of your strap. Bend your knees, hinge from your hips. Right? So you're creating a little bit of a shallow chair pose. Climb your hands down that strap. Mm -hmm. And climb down enough that you feel like when your spine is on a high diagonal, your arms are straight and you're able to tug up and create a lot of tension on that strap line. Now let's use that tension. Inhale, arch a lot into like a standing chair cow pose. And as you exhale, curl under into that cat and allow the pulling up on the strap to help you to round your back. Okay. Do this a couple of times. So the strap is giving us resistance to work with and actually allows us to pull a bit deeper into both the cow and the cat. So butt sticks out, chest forward, chin forward up. Sitting bones tuck under, pull the ribs back, bring the chin to the chest. And do that one more time. <laughs> Inhale, keep pulling up on the strap, arch cow. Exhale, round cat. Come to neutral, stand all the way up. You can put slack in your strap and then put the strap off to the side. For next, what we're going to do, you feel how your quads are already waking up. We're going to work with a little more quad strength. So take your yoga blanket or towel and you want to make a roll of it. So I'm going to roll 
it while it's folded. So I've got some width to work with here. And that roll goes towards the front of my yoga mat, not so close to the front that I don't have any room to stand in front of it, but close enough to the front that there's about a foot of space from the front of my blanket <laughs> to the front of the yoga mat. Then two blocks necessary. Okay. Come to stand. If you recall, I had you lifting your heels in that laying down on your back position. Your heels were up, but your toe and toe mounds were down. We're coming back to that angle of the foot. Right? Toe mounds down, heels are propped up on the blanket. Block number one goes in between the thighs. Block number two is held against your chest. Mm -hmm. So pull the block into your chest. You might hug your elbows in along the side of your body. Feel the angle of your foot. So it's kind of like you're wearing a wedge, like a platform wedge. And then I want you to stay as tall as possible. So you're staying vertical, not leaning forward, not leaning back. Bend your knees and go as straight down to the floor as you can. Staying vertical. When you start to lean forward, that's a good indicator of it's time to come back up. <laughs> yes, elevator squats. If you saw my Instagram feed this morning, it was all about these. So spine stays tall, back stays pretty straight as if you're sliding your back down a wall. Knees pitch forward. There's that deep crease of the ankle we work so hard to cultivate. You can come down. You could go all the way to the basement if you want. Can you keep your back straight as you do that? And then imagine you're sliding your back up a wall as you climb all the way up to the top floor, the penthouse. Now, we're not going to do a ton of these because they're really challenging. And I want you to think about, maybe I'm not going to go mail room, which would be all the way in the basement, to penthouse, which is the top floor. Maybe you want to work with a shallower range. Perhaps you just want to go from penthouse down three or four floors and back up to penthouse. Perhaps you want to go all the way to the bottom. You want to go from mail room to about the middle of the building and then back down. Holy smokes. <laughs> Do two more that you're satisfied with, where you're staying as vertical as possible. Whether you're going mail room to penthouse, <laughs> penthouse down a few floors, or mail, house, mail room and up a few floors. making your way all the way up to straight legs. Ha! <laughs> Move the block off to the side. One of them anyway. Keep one in your hand, step back off of your blanket roll, and put that over to the side. Now we're going to play a little game called Move Your Yoga Block. <laughs> so stand in mountain pose. Put the block behind your left ankle, please. Come to hands in prayer, so more like a samastiti. Can you shift weight into your right leg? Nudge your block back by about five inches. Come back to standing. Shift weight into your right leg. Lean a little forward. Bend your right knee a little. Nudge your block back by another five. Come back to standing. You see where we're going? <laughs> Lean forward, bend your knee a little. Nudge that block back with the tips of those toes, another five inches. Ugh. Keep the right knee bent as you nudge. Come back to standing. So we're loading our right leg. And you're going to play this game until you get your block as far back as you can. You might even have to go oh, fingertips to the floor to get it back there. <laughs> Come all the way back up. And eventually it's just going to be too far away from you. 
And that's when you'll come to standing, pivot yourself, walk to the back edge of your yoga mat. Now the block's going to go behind your right ankle, standing with hands in prayer, Samas Titi. And the nudge game, first it's just five, and back to standing. And then it's 10, you feel the need to bend your left knee and lean a little forward, and back to standing. 15. We reset all the time, right? We come back to standing. 20. 20 was quick. <laughs> and then you keep going. At some point, you might feel, okay, I got to touch my furniture, my wall, my fingertips to the floor. I brought it as far back as I can. And then bringing yourself all the way back up to standing. And then you know what? When it's too far, you turn. You walk to the back edge of your yoga mat. And we do the second round with it behind our left ankle. So you know that there aren't rules other than nudging and bending your standing knee. So take a little bit of time just to play. You could go arms in front of you. You could go arms out to the side like, a, like you're taking flight. Sometimes taking your wings far apart helps with the counterbalance of this. Right? See that you're bending the leg that you're standing on as you nudge. And it's just more playful rather than rule and alignment oriented. When it gets too far from you, go to the back of your yoga mat. Come to standing. It'll be behind that opposite heel. And then this last round of the game, the game of nudging. Oof. <laughs> Finding your way all the way back up to standing. Okay, one more game we're going to play using a block as the target. Come to the middle of your yoga mat. I'm going to use the length of mine. And situate your feet to hips distance apart. And then outside. So outside, I'm going to go outside of my left ankle, not directly outside, but a little bit outside of the left ankle and behind it, I'm stationing my block. So let me show you what that might look like from the side. My block is like outside the ankle, but it's over there a little bit. So take yourself to standing with that block standing tall, situated back, behind and out to the side a little bit. Of your, of your left ankle. And then bring your hands together in Samastiti. Bring your right knee up. Cross your ankle. Sit your hips back like you're doing a baby chair. And then come up. Bring the knee with you. Okay, now that knee goes behind you. Bend your standing leg. See if you might be able to tap your knee or shin to the block. And come all the way back up to standing. Bring the knee with you. Mm -hmm. Figure four with a little chair sit. Hip flexion to adduction, which is knee reaching behind you. A little bit of a curtsy. Uh -huh. Back to hip flexion. Figure four, chair. Up to standing, bring the knee with you, hip flexion. Sweep it behind. Inner thighs squeeze, tap the knee or shin, a little bit of a curtsy, come all the way back up. One more time, cross, sit, up to standing, bring the knee with you. It's a good place to hold your chair if you need some A assistance. A little bit of a curtsy, tap the knee shin, come all the way up to standing. Release the right foot. Okay, you know what to do, got two legs, two sides. So this block is going to go not outside of the ankle, but a little bit diagonally placed behind and off to the side. That's our target for our knee or our shin. Hands come together in prayer. Weight goes into right leg. Left knee comes up. We find balance. Figure four. 
chair sit. Up to standing, we bring the leg with us to hip flexion. It sweeps behind, we take a little bit of the curtsy. We tap the knee or shin, whatever makes sense. As soon as you hit the target, come back up. Knee towards the chest. Figure four, chair sit. Coming up to hip flexion, knee comes with you. Go behind, hit the target, tap down, and then rebound all the way back up. <laughs> this is three, we're gonna do five total. Sit back chair. Coming up, knee with you. Go behind, a little bit of a curtsy bow, target, tap, immediately back up. Crossover ankle to thigh, sit back. Come to standing, knee comes with you. Sweep it behind and around, tap your target. Both knees are bent here. All the way back up, hip flexion. Last round. Crossover figure four, sit back. Maybe you go a little deeper this time. All the way up, bring your leg with you. We're still balancing right leg. Sweep behind, little curtsy, hit your target. Come all the way back up and release your left leg. Shake out both legs vigorously. <laughs> Block off to the side. If you feel like kicking it, I understand. <laughs> Come to standing at one edge of your yoga mat in a mountain pose. Inhale, reach your arms, stretch up. And when you exhale, hip hinge, bend your knees and fold forward. Then inhale, lengthen, lifting halfway. As you exhale, take your right leg back towards a lunge position and put your right, yeah, take, I did left, you do right. Put your knee on the floor. You could put a blanket underneath it, you have one handy to you. And then get both yoga blocks, stand them up so you're framing your front shin. So we're forward in a bit of a crescent lunge. I'm gonna untuck my toes back there. I like that way better, but you're welcome to keep your toes tucked under. And then see if you can push your hands into your blocks on the tall setting, kind of lift up through the chest, drop the hips forward and down. You'll start to feel some opening through the front of the left or front of the extended legs hip, right? So hip flexor opening. And then try this. The front foot pushes straight down into the ground and it tries to slide backwards. The back knee presses into the floor and it tries to slide forward. So think of like your legs are trying to shear past each other. One's dragging back, one's dragging forward. Breathe a few deep breaths with that action of sliding your legs past one another. One more breath here. So you're keeping this awake and alive. And then when you exhale, can you sink in? And notice if you made a little more space to drop into your squat. Now you may decide my blocks are way too high. I'm gonna use them on a lower setting or I'm not gonna use them at all. I'm gonna let my fingertips touch the floor. So I'll let you decide. Then we go back to that work of the front foot and shin driving downward into the floor and trying to glide your front foot backwards. Then pressing down into your back knee, top of foot, or the toes might be tucked back there, and trying to slide that leg forward. So one's dragging back, one's dragging forward, and feel what that wakes up muscularly in your body, and hold those muscles awake for one more breath. And then use an exhale and sink, yeah, deeper in. Now let's use this space and do a little bit of back and forth. Hips pull back like a runner stretch. Hips come forward back into the lunging. So from more of a static hold into this fluid movement between hamstring length and hip flexor and quad length. Bring yourself back to the forward lunge. 
step one knee back underneath the hip and then switch the leg. So you'll step through with the opposite foot. See if that works for you that in terms of how deeply the front knee is bending and how much weight is on the back knee. You might need to scoot your back knee back a little bit. Let's go to tall blocks and just see. Find the lift of chest, like a curling up. Then start to work the legs. Now it's the opposite foot that's in front. That's driving down and dragging back. The opposite leg's reaching back, but it's trying to pull forward. Okay. So one leg's dragging back, bent knee leg dragging back, straightish leg dragging forward. Light up all the musculature that's required to hold that awake. Don't collapse the chest. One more breath. Exhale, get soupy, sink into it. See if the blocks are serving you in their height. If they're not, you might choose to lower them down. We'll do one more round. So it's kind of isometric work for right and left side to deepen into the hip flexor opening. Front foot furiously trying to move backwards. <laughs> right leg, right hip, top of right foot or, or top of back foot trying to drag forward. Don't collapse the chest. Keep everything that needs to stay awake, awake. Take two more breaths with all that awakening. Use your exhale to soften, get soupy, and then move back and forth from this lunge to a runner stretch. A little bit of fluidity between those two things. Bring it forward back towards the lunging. Step the front knee back underneath the hip. Move your props off to the side for now. And bring yourself into a child's pose or it could be a puppy pose. So puppy would have the hips over the knees, the spine walked forward. Child's would be sinking the hips back in the direction of the heels and allowing the spine to walk forward. And so we did all this work in the lower body, opening up through the ankles, through the toes, through the knees, through the hips, and strengthening through the legs. Take a couple breaths of repose here. And then bring yourself forward. Take a block, open your shins, and put that block kind of between the ankles or between the feet. And then sit back on it. Right? So it's kind of like child's pose in the way our hips are moved back, but we're not completely sitting on the ground where we close the knee joints, right? We're giving our, our bottom just a little bit of height. And then walk yourself forward. So there's a bit of a spine on a diagonal line. Think of from the hip to the shoulder to the crown of the head, an upward projecting diagonal. Take your right hand, arms are straight, step it into the center of your yoga mat. Bring your left hand behind you, place the palm against your sacrum. Start with looking down chest facing down, eyes facing towards that right hand. Now we're gonna move into thoracic twisting. What that is, is when you inhale, you open your chest to the left, head turns. And when you exhale, you go back to where you started. Do it like five times slow with breath. I like inhaling to open twist because you can keep the length. Right? Exhale to close it. So we're turning the spine, but this is also starting to bring some work into that right shoulder joint and that right shoulder blade, that right scapula. 
you can feel right shoulder doing a little bit of work. You can feel that scapula or that shoulder blade moving on the back side of your rib cage as you're turning your rib cage. Last time here, opening and then closing. Switch hands, left hand where the right hand was, so it's a straight arm position. Right hand placed on the sacrum for support back there. And then inhale, open to the right. Exhale, close it. So yes, lengthening and rotation for the thoracic part of the spine and the neck as well as you turn your head, but also start to feel what's happening in the long bone of the left arm, the left shoulder, and some movement of the left shoulder blade as you're twisting open and closed. Last one, open and bring it back. Come on off of your yoga block. Put it off to the side or sit on it, any comfortable cross-legged seat. So you could choose to sit on the block or not. And then grab your strap. We're coming back to strap. Focusing on upper body now, shoulders. Shoulder blades, neck. Take the strap and hold it in arms that are like a V formation above you. So your hands will be set well wider than your shoulders themselves. And then start to do a little shoulder flossing. So that's where you bring your strap in front of you. And you bring your strap overhead potentially behind you, right? You might circle it behind your body, overhead and back and front. So sometimes the range of motion is there to go into this all the way back thing. Sometimes your hands are too close together to even offer that as an option. So you could see about taking your arms wider and see what kind of circularity you can get there. And then look for a place in your movement of your shoulders where you feel, oh, big stretch. And then stay there. So if your pec muscles are tight, your chest muscles are tight, as you bring the strap behind you, you might feel that big opening across the chest, even down the bicep muscles. And then come out of that static hold of stretch and go back into the flossing or the movement in an arc pattern. It could be all the way up and over. It could just be above head and then back to the front of you. And you might feel like, oh, this is getting easy. So that's a good indicator to climb your hands a little closer and give yourself less space to work with. More shoulder opening required. One more time all the way around. Okay, so there we go, moving shoulder joints some. Now take your strap, hold it in front of you, so you're not going to let your arms be wide anymore. You're at exactly shoulder's distance. Right. And pull the edges of your strap apart from one another. So you start to feel something happening in your upper back. And then move your shoulders up, right? So shrug up. And then pull your armpits back. See if you can squeeze your shoulder blades together without bending your elbows, without loosening your strap tension. And then slide your shoulder blades down your back into that pattern we call depression. And then reach your arms forward and pull your chest away from your strap into protraction. Do it a few times. Elevation, shrug up, big movements here. Retract, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Drag them down, keep pulling the edges of your strap apart and reach arms away, pull chest like concave. One more time, shrug up, pull back, slide down 
and reach away. And then do a roll up, back, and down. Let go of your strap. Keep your shoulders in that pulled back position. Come to sit tall. So we've already established the position we want our shoulders in. Can you now lengthen the crown of your head up away from your tailbone? Let's do a little bit of work for the neck here. Chin to the chest. Let your head get heavy, folding over. Almost imagine like you're holding a lemon between your chin and your chest. Like a little piece of fruit there, held tightly. And then start to move your chin across the right collarbone, like you could roll the lemon across the right collarbone. <laughs> and then take right ear, right shoulder. Try to do it without dropping your lemon. And so you still got that imaginary lemon wedged there. And then we're going to drop the lemon. Take your head back. Nose pointing up. And then give yourself an underbite. What does that mean? It means your bottom row of teeth go in front of the top row. Can you feel that stretch of your scalene muscles, the front neck muscles? And release your underbites. Bring your left ear towards your left shoulder. The lemon's back. As you turn your chin to the left, imagine you've wedged that, that lemon underneath your chin. And now you're going to roll the lemon across the left-hand side of your collarbone until your chin is pointing down and you've held that lemon tightly underneath, like in the, in the notch of the chest. Let's go the other way. Roll the lemon across to the left. Keep holding it, left ear, left shoulder. Now the head goes back, the lemon goes away. Underbite where Marlon Brando, right? Jut your jaw, lower jaw forward. Relax that effort. Right ear, right shoulder. Guess what's back, the lemon. Chin moves slightly down, so you're holding it underneath there. And then roll the lemon across the right-hand side of your collarbone until you've secured it towards the notch of your chest. And let it go as you come to sit tall. Shoulders are still in their position. The neck just got longer. And then this movement I love for working tension out of the trapezius muscles. So. Very casually, take your right arm out to the side, kind of like you're gonna, like you're serving someone something. And look at your right hand, like look at whatever you're serving. And then turn your head to the left and turn the arm and reach it behind you. So you look away as you tuck your arm behind your body. And then roll the head to the right, go back to looking at your serving palm. See what we're doing here? Now we're turning away as we tuck the arm and drop left ear, left shoulder. Mm -hmm. Look towards, head goes upright, it rolls to the right, so we could see the right palm. Head swivels away, arm goes behind, drop left ear, left shoulder. One more time, look to your palm, look at what you're serving, rotation of the neck to the right. Tuck the arm behind you, rotate to the left, and drop left ear, left shoulder. Come all the way back to center. Let both arms hang. Close your eyes. And can you feel how your right shoulder from that work feels like it's four inches lower than your left? Like your whole, like you've got. One shoulder hiked up by your earlobe, the other one dropped so far away from it, right? So that little bit of movement is, works wonders for the trapezius muscles. Let's do it the other way. Open eyes, serving palm left, look at it. Turn the head to the right, tuck the arm behind you, look towards right shoulder, then drop right ear, right shoulder. 
slowly unwind, go back to looking at whatever the heck you're serving. Turn the head to the right, tuck the arm behind, drop right ear, right shoulder. So we're rotated and side bending the neck. Couple more. Look to your serving. Look to the palm. Roll the shoulder in, tuck the arm behind, look to the right, side bend the neck. Last one, look. <laughs> and then look away, tuck behind, right ear, right shoulder, and the twist. Come all the way back. Sit up tall like your neck is a giraffe, like ET phone home. Close your eyes, let your arms hang. So much space there. Allow your eyes to open. And then let's come to our back using a yoga block. We'll do one last neck and shoulder opener before our final rest. One yoga block, set yourself up as if you're going to bridge pose. So knees will be bent, feet at hips distance. We're going to hold the block in between the hands. And then let's get a sense of this. Arms to the ceiling, holding your yoga block. Right? As you reach your arms overhead, lift your hips off the floor like bridge. Secure the block into the floor overhead, and then slowly roll your spine down. So it's upper back first middle back second, keep scooping the tailbone under, lower back third. Right. Go back to where we started, arms to the sky. Inhale, hips high, arms reach even farther overhead, secure the block, and then slowly roll the spine down. Don't let your block lift. So if you articulate from top to bottom spine, then your rib cage won't try to do the work of shoulder opening. <laughs> and then go back, reach up. Hips nice and high. Arms all the way over. Push the block into the floor. And then roll the spine down. So you got to scoop your pubic bone to get those different segments of the spine onto the floor. And then stay there. Spine is secure. Feet are grounded. Push the block into the ground. Tuck your chin to your chest, back of the head wide against the mat. Breathe. One more breath. And exhale, let it all go. Block goes off to the side. Let's finish with a little bit of windshield wipering, shall we? Arms to cactus, or if you have space, you can go out to a T. Heel toe your feet to the edges of your yoga mat. Let your legs start to swish side to side. So it's one leg internally rotating, one leg externally rotating. Let's make this a complex <laughs> windshield wipe. So cactus arms if you haven't. Let's all go to cactus. As your legs are going and moving opposite directions, can you roll your forearms in opposite directions? So one will be stay facing up and one will roll down. Right? So this orientation is as the knees go to the right, the left forearm turns down. As the knees go to the left, the right forearm spins down. So we've got internal, external hip rotation happening, internal, external shoulder rotation happening. And why not complicate it even more and start to turn the head side to side? So we really just start to split our attention <laughs> between all of these moving pieces. Find your way all the way back to center with the head and the arms. Drop the legs to the right. Turn it into sleeper pose so you'll pick your right ankle foot off the floor. Hook it on the outside of your left. As you feel your belly button being pulled across to the right, Turn your head to the left, left ear close to the ground. Breathe here. Mm. 
And bring the head to center. Unhook that right leg. Let both knees swish to the left. Stack left on outside of right. Turn right ear to floor. Sleeper posture, a few breaths. Bringing head to center, unhooking the legs. Hug them in towards you, give them an embrace. Go side to side, so this cradling or rocking, it's comforting to not just children and babies, but also to us, right? <laughs> Grown-ups. So we take this cradle side to side movement. Then find center and stretch out, coming to our final pose. So resting and taking a bit of a body scan. Let your limbs be long. You can use any props for support that help you to rest more fully. Maybe you tuck the blanket underneath your neck as a cervical roll to support your neck curve. Perhaps you place the blocks underneath your knees to support the lower back. Allowing horizon line of the eyes to close. Keeping all parts of you resting, begin to notice the spontaneous breath. And feel how the breath moves the body very subtly. Imagine the breath could extend all the way down the legs, into the feet and into the toes. Begin to find small movements in the toes. Imagine breath could move all the way down the long bones of your arms into hands and fingers and find small movements and fingers. And stretch arms up and over. Reach legs down and away. Bend your knees one at a time. Roll onto your side. From there, press into the ground, lifting yourself up to any seat that's comfortable. And closing the horizon line of your eyes, bring your hands together in a gesture of gratitude. Gratitude for the resilience of our bodies and our minds and our hearts. And thank you so much for showing up.